think what's so interesting is that meeting planners seem more and more focused on the entire experience before the meeting, during the meeting, and after the meeting. It's so much more important than the one hour keynote. It's how do we connect with the customer all during the year and make the meeting more meaningful. And I think people will use technology to do that. I think we'll see people using their portable devices more, getting the slides in real time, getting the transcript in real time, having a video after the event, asking more questions, just connecting with the customer. Because we are always connected with these little devices that we have in our pocket all the time, I think we'll see these devices used more and more to make the meeting more impactful, not just during that one hour of the meeting, but all during the year. I mean, is that the present, the future, what's your view? Well, uh, actually, it is the future, but the future is here, no? This is some kind of uh, a duplicity, because uh, the, the technology is uh, allowing us to improve the way we are doing things. In UBM Mexico, for example, in the whole UBM world, we are committed to develop communities. So not just a single trade show in which we present exhibitors with professional buyers, but also we're committed to develop content and create communities the whole year round. Thanks to the technology and with innovation in these cases, we are now having the tools to do so, no? uh, to, to bring on the whole year, 365 years, seven, uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, all this possibility to in interconnect within this big community of buyers, professional speakers, uh, all the content that it is very specialized in every single vertical that we are uh, developing as a trade show. So the uh, future is here. And if, if we do not accept and embrace the, 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 the new technology to develop our businesses, then the future will pass us and we can be obsolete in a very short time. Jose, from your perspective, what's the future? Well, I, you know, I kind of agree with both Jerry and Jaime. But of course, it's very important to, you know, to notice that business is to really have a, a nice, good, profitable meeting of a person, a company that sells a product and a company that needs that product. So all what we create in this environment, it's good for this relation. So technology, it's already here and it's upgrading every year and it's creating a more valuable relation between a buyer and a seller in a, in a specific event. So what we will see in the future, it's maybe uh, something that um, will enrich this relation and there will be a lot of information on the seller side and the buyer side in order to have a more a profitable uh, business experience. In your book, you talk a lot uh, about big data and how there's a large percentage of data that is created in experiences such as, not just congresses or, or trade shows or all kinds of events, but in, in, in the interaction and social media of both businesses and people that is not necessarily processed and is not necessarily structured. How do you see data taking a place, big data, playing a role in the meetings industry in the near future? Well, you know, there, there are all these new tools to process big data. So I just started a new company called Wayblazer based on IBM Watson, which is designed around unstructured data. Think of all the data that's created in meetings. Think of all the speeches that are given, all the questions that could be captured and instantly codified. So if I want to know something after the meeting, I can't go to all the tracks. Why can't I ask a question about what happened in this meeting I didn't get to? You can't do that today. I think, as the other panelists have said, the future is here. It's just sort of unevenly distributed. So we have to be innovative enough to grab that future, or as you suggested, it will pass us by. On the other hand, when organizing a trade show or an event, you have like different layers, different type of access to technology, different devices, different ways of, of people interacting with, with, with technology. Some use a lot of technology for complementing that experience and forming or being part of that community that you were mentioning, Jaime. But some others are still a little bit far from technology and the regular use of those devices in Latin American countries. How do you see that trend? Is it, is it going at the speed of other parts of the world as UBM normally uh, does it all over the world? 
are we up to speed or are we kind of a step a little bit behind in those kind of experiences and solutions? Well, uh, what I can tell you in that regard is that uh, Mexico is nowadays and it's up to date in the use of technology and of course to, to have these uh, new uh, options to get access to data, to analyze data and to share data. So uh, perhaps the challenge here in Mexico as a country is uh, the infrastructure. We still do not have the enough infrastructure in venues like this one, no? like Centro Banamex or perhaps uh, Sintermex Monterrey or Expo Guadalajara, that they do not have the strongest technology, the, the completely wide range that we need for 30,000 people at the same time, connecting themselves to the, their mobile devices to get access to the show application. Uploading data. Uploading, data, downloading, data, interacting. interacting. That's right, because nowadays, for example, in UVM, we are using applications to allow all the visitors for a trade show to interact each other the whole time. The problem is, if you do not have the strong access, and in, in places like this, if they have a lot of metal that is blocking the, the external signal, then you will have a big, big problem to get them. No? So this is the big challenge that we have in places like Mexico, Mexico City, Monterrey, Guadalajara, to name the three major Thank cities you. on the on, yeah, on, on the trade show industry in this country. So uh, we have to improve that way, but uh, the, the future again is here. Now we have update technology, we have people that is pretty well uh, trained to use and to develop the, the, the technology to uh, have at the very end a memorable experience. This is uh, the, the leitmotiv that we have to follow. We have to create memorable experiences, either it is a business or it's a, a business to consumer show or it's a conference or whatever. At the end, we have to, to, to be committed to create memorable experiences. And of course, with the lack of technology, it can be a memorable experience, <laughs> just the other way, okay? Yeah. Exactly, but yeah. this is the way I see it. And on the other hand, we have to help people to boost their own business. At the end, it's not just showing off by information as the main goal by itself. The interaction, how we trigger business between attendants, exhibitors, uh, and presenters, and all kinds of interested parties who are part of your shows or part of the corporate events. What are the best practices you are seeing today and that you foresee? in the future to boost and trigger, drive those business within your stakeholders? I think uh, in Egypt Browns, one of the most important things, and I think you know, we share the same vision with our companies, is that uh, content is king here. So we have to produce events with really uh, meaningful and valuable information and happenings within the show that can really bring to the show um, decision makers. Every industry has a group of people that are taking decisions on acquiring things or suggesting uh, some type of uh, solutions. Also, uh, decision makers on the government side, all the stakeholders related to the, to the government, have to attend the show. The only way we could do that is if our content is really meaningful. So one of the things we are doing is really investing a lot in what is happening in the show. It's not only showing products and having buyers. It's what type of products, how are they present, and what type of buyers are attending the show. We can easily fill a venue like Centro Anamex if we give away a car. But to that brings you the really good buyer, the beautiful The person, right people the right person, it's not. So what we are uh, promoting is what are we doing within the show that it's meaningful for this VIP to attend the show. So I think most of the companies will go that way in order to have very valuable, valuable shows. And as Kaim is saying, technology it's a lot, uh, you know, has to do a lot in, in this, in this uh, part. Um, no venue right now in Mexico can offer you the, the infrastructure to really have uh, an IT experience, a full experience. The only venue that it's about to inaugurate, and this is uh, uh, new because I just heard that yesterday from Expo Guadalajara, they're doing a big investment on their Wi-Fi network. So you will be able to do pitch of 30,000 people in a venue. 
okay, and everybody having a good service. So that's what venues need. You need because imagine you have a watch that it's doing pitching to the antennas, you cell phones on your phone, your iPad, your computer, so you may have four devices are pitching. So all the antennas will get, get crazy if everybody, you know, 20,000 people are pitching at the same time. Just to finish this round, tell me your definition, your very own definition of innovation and your risk approach. You have a philosophy, how to take part of that risk, measuring the risk, or avoiding the risk, or taking over the risk. What's, what's your opinion? You know, I think we've been talking about it. Creativity is about thinking up new things. Innovation is about doing it. It's about putting an idea to work. So we talked about we have the technology, but the meeting industry has to have the courage to take the risk to put it to work. And the biggest barrier to innovation is fear. Fear of, I'll lose my job, it won't work quite right, it will cost a lot. So look, in this world today of the digital experience, you can test everything at low cost. 20% of what you see from kayak.com every day is a test, it's an experiment. So we have to experiment, we have 3D printers, we have many tools that allow us to prototype at low cost, to have lower risk, but to continually innovate and learn. And that's how we move ahead. That's how we move. With that idea, let me take a break and we'll go to the second block of this production hosted by Anthropic here in Mexico City. Thank you.